Welcome to TTS 2021, organized by Sección de Idiomas from Facultad de Humanidades, USAC, the Embassy from the United States y Guatemala en Ajeri. My name is Casta Robles and I'm glad to host this conference. I would like to begin by giving some general instructions for the conference. At the end of the conference, there will be 10 minutes for questions and answers. Please don't forget to write your questions in the chat on YouTube. We will be happy to read them at the end. We invite you to subscribe to our official channels, Idiomas USAC at TTS conference to follow all the conference on these three days. 10 minutes before the conference ends, we will be sharing the attendance link in the chat. It will be available 15 minutes more after conference ends. Please make sure to sign it to have access to your diploma. Diplomas will be available on June 12, 2021 for 30 days in the link that will be shared along with the attendance link by the end of the conference. We appreciate your valuable participation in the conference online cooperative learning tools given by Luis Angel Mendez Berrios to whom we gladly welcome today in the name of the organization and committee of TTS 2021. I will be introducing Luis Angel Mendez Berrios, PM student at HUSAC, pensum completed, law student at HUSAC, four semester, en bachiller en computación, access alumni, CL alumni, and a head volunteer. So let's welcome online cooperative learning tools for this interesting conference. Hi, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. So I'm gonna start. I'm very excited to share um, these tools with you. Uh, but before we start, uh, I want you to enter to the link in the, in, in the box below. So you can share in one word what is um, online cooperative learning for you? It is like a brainstorming. So I want you to go to that, that link, please. And I will share my screen so you can, you can actually see uh, the, the cloud. Okay. So let me find this. Okay. okay, so we have a few words, interactive learning, teamwork, together, work, opinions, leads, together, projects. Yeah, you can still write as many words as you, as you, you know, related to cooperative learning. Unite, interaction, technology, ideas, opinions. Yeah. You can write even more words if you want. You can write up to five words. Yeah, resources, projects innovation, track, respect. Group work, yeah. Team, creativity. Yeah, so basically, that is cooperative learning. All of you are have a like a great concept of online cooperative learning. So 
we are going to start with the presentation. So we have online cooperative learning tools. Before we start, I want to I want you to see the difference between collaborative learning and cooperative learning. Well, I have to start saying that co co uh, collaborative learning it is an informal, informal, flexible, and less structured lesson. Whereas in cooperative learning, you have a formal structure and a direct lesson. Another uh, thing that we have here is that in collaborative learning, each student is responsible for their learning. In the other side, in cooperative learning, all students and the teacher are in charge of the learning. So collaborative or collaboration follows the philosophy of interaction, personal life, where students members of, of each group are responsible for their action. So in this type of learning, the teacher may or may not be present in the lesson. In the other side, in cooperative learning, we design the activities in order to facilitate the process of learning through a structure of interactions, where the teachers guide the activities and also there is a goal established. Another thing is that most of the times uh, in the evaluation in collaborative learning is done by students. And in the other side, in cooperative learning, uh, the evaluation is made by the teacher. So I want you to share your experiences. Let me, I will share a Padlet link with you so you can uh, share your experiences about cooperative learning. I have one question for you. The first question. Uh, just let me share my screen again. This, okay. I have a question for you in this Padlet and I want you to answer. Well, you can just press this button and add your, your answer so I can read them. The first question is, when was the last time you made a cooperative learning activity in a virtual lesson? When was the last time you made a cooperative learning in a virtual lesson? Okay, today, you, you, you say today, last week, last Friday, you sing Jamboard in class, teaching football. That's nice. We are going to see Jamboard later. It was a month ago, cooperative learning is useful for both students and teachers because we can resolve doubts regarding a class. Nice. You can still share your answers. Last week in Canva. Yeah, you can use Canva for your cooperative learning classes. 
you were talking about healthy food. I want to see more of your answers. Okay, then I have another question for you. Do you apply cooperative learning in your virtual lessons? You can say yes or no, then you have to answer why. If you say no, why? And if you say yes, why do you use cooperative learning in your virtual, virtual lessons? Yeah, I like your answer. Sometimes you play as a team. Yes, because it is a form we can learn together as a team. Yeah, I usually apply it, but it depends. Yeah, it depends on the situation. Okay, do you have any, any other answer? Okay, I like this answer. It says, yes, because we can have a better experience by contributing with our opinion. Yeah, I like that, that answer. Yes, of course, students can help each other. That's another point. Uh, to practice dialogues or kind of interviews. And everyone and everybody can share different opinions, of course. So basically, that is online cooperative learning tools. And as I was saying, with cooperative learning, you, you can have a formal, flexible, and a better structure lesson for your students. And you can um, design it in order to facilitate the accomplishment of a specific task or a goal. And actually, uh, all students are going to work the same because in collaborative learning, not all of the students are going to, to work the same as their partners. So you can see here the difference between collaborative and cooperative learning. And we can say that cooperative learning, it's better. So that's why today we are going to see a few tools you can use in order to improve your virtual lessons in your, your your class on your english classes so you already shared your experiences so why cooperative learning because it promotes students critical thinking and actually students are going to take a role in the learning process it is going to improve students' self-esteem and students are going to need to use uh, a lot of interaction skills, but not only interaction skills, they are going to have to use their skills, their technology skills to be specific. 
for example, imagine one student is very creative and he likes to to make like beautiful presentations, like putting a lot of pictures, a lot of information, uh, using a lot of colors. Uh, so he's going to use his skills, his creative skills, in order to uh, work with in this presentation. And imagine there is another student who likes to, yeah, to express uh, in, in the in, in the time they present a topic. He's going to use his skills too. So that's why we should use a cooperative learning tools. I have some tools for you. This, all of these tools are multi-platform. So that means you can use it in Windows, Mac OS, Linux, in computers, right? And actually in the other side with phones, you can use it with Android and iOS. Uh, it is multi-platform. It doesn't matter if you are in a computer or using your phone, you are going to be able to use all of these tools. Sometimes in Android or in iOS, in phones, right? You need to download the app, uh, but it, those apps are not that big and they don't have like a big data consumption. So, that, that's fine. Students are going to be able to use those, those apps or those platforms. So the tools we are going to, to watch in these lessons are the following. The first one is Padlet. I guess all of you have used Padlet before, or if you don't know what is Padlet, is the tool we were using, using a moment ago where I was asking you when was the last time you made a cooperative learning activity in, a, in, in your class, or when I, when I was asking you if you all apply cooperative learning in your virtual lessons. So that's Padlet. So let me share my screen so you can see more of, of the Padlet you can create. So basically, this is Padlet. You can go to Padlet, create your account. It doesn't require like too much time. You can open your account only by uh, singing up with your Google account. Then you are going to be in this dashboard where you can go to make a Padlet. You just have to press this button here and you can make uh, a lot of different Padlets. For example, the one with, that we were using a moment ago was this one that is named column. You can organize the content divided by a lot of columns. Or actually, you can make uh, a list, a wall, a conversation, a map, or something like a chronology that is uh, formed by a lot of different uh, squares that are going to be ordered according to the time it happens. So for example, you can create a Padlet of wall. Let's make this one, the first one. And then here you can uh, personalize it or, or customize it as you want. You have to add the title, for example, online cooperative learning tools. Then you have to add a description. Then you can add an icon in order to to make it look better. So let's find an icon right here. Maybe this one. You can change the background. 
you can use some gradients like uh, like this one. And you can see that all the palette is different, or you can use like some textures like bricks or corkboard. You can add also some pictures. in order to make it look better, right? Then here you can change the, the colors of the Padlet. It can be white or black. You can change the font. You can allow everyone to see who's writing in this Padlet, or you can keep it um, private so no one can see uh who 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 was writing right uh you can put the answers like first or at the end or you can allow everyone to put some reactions for example give a uh, like vote give some stars or, or leave a note so we are going to put here for example a like and you just have to push next and start to post it so yeah then you have your padlet and you can send this padlet to your students so they can they can write their opinions or their ideas in this padlet as, as, as we were doing a moment ago well let me show you other padlet is for example this one if you are teaching something related to geography you can use this padlet so you will have a little map and for example identify Guatemala department So you just have to share this Padlet with your students and they can basically like add like any place, for example, you, they can find any place, for example, Jutiapa, and they can add like a lot of information they know from Jutiapa. For example, uh, it is a touristic place, so they can put like notes in every site. Students can, uh, for example, find the pen. They can write something about the pen. They can add uh, pictures. They can add uh, some links, or they can upload any file they want. To. So they can write as many information they want. So there are a lot of tools you can use in Padlet. Basically, I encourage you to create your own Padlet and share it with your students. I'm sure they are going to enjoy it. So yeah, that's a Padlet. Now I have a little activity with you uh, with using Jamboard. I, some of I've seen some of you write Jamboard in in the last activity, so we are going to have an activity using Jamboard. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you how you can create your own Jamboard. So for this, you have to go to Google and write Jamboard. You have to click on the first result you have and then you can create your first jamboard in the bottom below in this one that says create a new jam okay 
Okay, so we have a jumbo. Basically, this is like a whiteboard that you can use in order to improve your class. You can customize it too. You can uh, use a different background. For example, this one that is made by points, lines, uh, squares. If you want to teach uh, uh, something related to math, uh, you can change the color, for example, black, or you can add your own picture, your own background. So we're going to use, uh, let me see this one. In this Jamboard, you can add uh, some notes. You can change the color. For example, it can be uh, yellow, green, blue, pink, and orange. So I'm gonna add one uh, yellow. Actually, it is like a outfit, right? So the first activity I have is that I want you to write the differences between collaborative and cooperative learning. Okay, so I'm gonna put this posted in the middle. Well, now I'm gonna share this Jamboard with you. So you can enter to this uh, whiteboard and you can share your opinions too. Because I want to see uh, what do you think is the difference between collaborative and cooperative learning as we were uh, talking a few moments ago. So let me create the link so I can share it with you. To share it, you just have to go to the bot button that is uh, on the top that says share. Then you have to click on get the link. You have to make this link so everyone can that has the link can, can access to it and everyone can edit it. So you when you have that ready, you can just share it with, share it with your students and they can write or post any other post-it in this in this jumble. I want to see your answers. You can use all the tools you you want. For example, uh, post-its, pictures, uh, or only writing text. That's up to you. Okay, I've seen like some of you are joining. So yeah, if you are using your phone or your computer, you can select these options that says uh, post it or nota adhesiva and you can click on this write and add your your post-its for example For example, you can add your notes. And this one, in collaborative learning, all the students are going to evaluate uh, their partner. Have another one, good afternoon, an excellent tool to interact with students, excellent, great tool. You can actually change the, the size of these notes.
I think there are 11, 11 people in this jumbo. Yeah, I, I encourage you, you can write whatever you want, but according to differences between collaborative and cooperative learning. It's an interactive tool, yeah. Thank you. What else? Hello there. Yeah. Okay, so actually, Jamboard is part of Google Suite. I've seen that not everyone knows a lot of Google Suite or, or not all the people use Google services. And actually they are like a great tool because you don't only have Jamboard, you also have uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, where you can, uh, ask your students to work together. They can make uh, the work in the same documents together. I've seen you are like moving all this around and we have more answers. I'm gonna read them. It says, collaborative learning. Students organize their effort between themselves. Uh, group structure. Cooperative activities are structured with each student assigned a specific role. It is teacher structure, yeah. That's a great answer. In collaborative learning, all the students are going to evaluate their partners. That was my answer. I think collaborative learning is a method. Cooperative is the activity to do a team. Yeah. I like that answer too. The other one says, I love Jumbo because you can also load pictures from your drive or Google. You can also organize your students in each place you want, they can work. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen you are like moving all these pictures. And yeah, that was a, a great example of how to use Google Jamboard in cooperative learning. For example, in this case, you can make a Google Jamboard, you can share it in your class you can assign a specific topic and your students can write about it or they can write their opinions about it as we were doing a little moment ago with Padlet because all of these tools are cooperative. So thank you for your answers. And now um, I wanna show you other Google services. The next one we are going to use is Oh, thank you, Abdul. <laughs> okay, we're going to see other tools. We're going to see. Oh, wait, before we, we move on, I'm gonna want to read this. It says, collaborative, all students only stay here, but cooperative, they give opinions, answers, listen and talk and participate in all. It says collaborative learning will be available consultation to facilitate group discussions, cooperative learning, teacher maintain the control of the process at each stage. Thank you. Um, here we have another opinion. I understood that collaborative is when students helps and cooperative uh, when teachers and students participate. Yeah, okay. So we are going to move on to the next tool, that is Google Sheets. So for this, you just have to go to Google and write Google Sheets. Okay. So you can make here your, your pages. So we are going to make a, a blank document. Okay. As we were doing a little, a uh, few moments ago with Jamboard, we can do the same thing, but with other Google tools, for example, Google Sheets. 
And I want you in this Google Sheet to write as many tools you know in order to make a cooperative learning. Just let me make a little table. Everyone, everyone can read it. Okay. So I want you to write the name of the tool in a brief description. Online cooperative learning tools, you know. I'll just leave this like this. Online cooperative learning tools. Okay, so now I'm gonna share this, this sheet, Google sheet with you. So you can write as many tools as you know and write a brief description. So as I, as I said, in order to make your students participate, you should go to this button that says share. Share. I'm going to add a name. Online cooperative learning tools. Okay. So then I'm going to change this link. So everyone that uh, has the link can access to it. And then I'm going to change this so everyone can uh, work in this document. Yeah, now I will give you five minutes so you can write as many tools as you know and write a brief description of those tools. I'm waiting for you so you can enter to this. Okay, the first person is here. We have another one. El modo, yeah, actually, that's a good tool. I care about it, and actually, I have used it too. Kahoot, yeah, my students love Kahoot. Socrative, yeah, Socrative is almost like a hood, but it is in order to evaluate your students. Canva, wiser. I haven't heard about Wiser. Mm -hmm. Workshop should nice. Actually, you can keep this link so you can um, you can watch it later when the conference ends. And you can see if there is any tool you haven't seen before. You can come and see, for example, if you don't know what is Socrative, you can see, oh, Socrative is here, and maybe I can use it for my lesson. Or if maybe if you didn't know about uh, Story Jumper, you just come to this document, you read the description, and you know what is, what, what is Story Jumper, what does it stand for? Geniali, Google Sites, yeah. Yeah, we are getting the descriptions. It says Edmodo connects teacher and student as a social network. Yeah, it is like, like a Facebook, a Facebook page but where students can interact. Padlet allows teacher to create exercise or games. Uh -huh. Socrative allows teachers to create content. Wiser, interactive worksheet creator, thousand of options already created, or you can create yours, very friendly to use. I think I'm gonna use that one. Okay. 
quizzes, yeah, class dojo, book club, book club is an interactive platform that transforms smartphones into exceptional learning. Mm, interesting. Quizzes, find and create gamified quizzes, lessons, presentations, and flashcards for students, employees, and everyone else. Uh, story jumper, you can create your stories. Wizard that me, okay. Project GT creates multimedia presentations with dynamic slides. Okay. Woo class. Mm -hmm. Class Dojo, it is a platform like Classroom. Okay, Google Classroom. You can include all your students, interact, and take the control. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I think Class Dojo is more for kindergarten students and a model is more for like teenagers actually that's that's what i think let me know if if i'm wrong free with it is a website that allows teachers to create quiz to facilitate video discussions yeah free with is a great tool i have used it too Intimeter uh, that helps to see the opinions of your students and also you can use it to have a time to ask questions and see what your students think. Also is to make your present. Yeah, I, I use it in the beginning of my presentation. Okay. The model connects teachers and students as a social network. Yeah. Naturally, now you are all of you are interacting. So you are making this document all of you together. Quizzes. You can find and create gamify quizzes, lessons, presentations, and flashcards for your students. Yeah. Quizlet, Plus Dojo, Adobe Sparks. Yeah, Adobe Sparks is almost like Canva or Geniali. Bambusi, it is a quick and easy to use tool for playing and creating games. It doesn't require registration to play. Hmm. That seems to be a good option. GeoGebra, it is a platform to share activities with students using mathematical problems. Like worksheets, it is a useful tool that helps you to create your own worksheets, and those are interactive. It's nice. You can use it to evaluate your students. Also, there are some worksheets created already. Like worksheets, uh, it is duplicated, it is twice. Yeah, there are many tools I haven't heard before, and I think I'm gonna use them uh, in my virtual lessons. So, thank you. Oh, here we have another one on voices. Yeah. So thank you for your for all of your answers. So now we are going to move on to another Google tool that is part of Google Tweet. So it is Google Doc, Google Documents. So I'm gonna make new document. So in this document, I want you to answer a few questions as a team. I have four questions.
What is remote learning? What are the advantages of remote learning? What are the disadvantages of remote learning and remote learning or virtual lessons in Guatemala? So I want you to, I will share this link with you. So then you can write your, your own answers. And with this information, we are going to make a presentation. But before we make the presentation as a team, I want you to, to enter to this Google document. And I want you to write as many ideas as you have. So I'm going to share this with you. So I want you to write, like, uh, or I want you to try to answer these questions. What is remote learning? What are the advantages of remote learning? And what are the disadvantages of remote learning? And remote learning in Guatemala. Actually, I want to see your definitions or your ideas about remote learning, the advantages of remote learning, the disadvantages, and remote learning in Guatemala.
thank you all of you are uh, writing a lot of uh, great answers so i'm gonna give you two more minutes so you can write as many ideas you have If there is only one minute left. Okay, so time's up. I'm gonna read all of your answers. The first question says, what is remote learning? Also called distance learning is an educational process that assumes that students, users and teachers or instructors are physically separated while the technology enables their communications and overcoming time and space obstacles. Uh, it is by Marjana in 2019. We have another answer. It says, it occurs when the students and teachers are separated by time and distance and therefore cannot meet in a traditional classroom. It is a term used nowadays. It's the tr transitions to distance learning easier for students engage on the path to learning growing it is important in the digital workplace nice now with the second question advantages of remote learning interactive models assessment based on real world scenarios discussions and solving problems we can use tools have effective learning programs lectures reading assignments and discussion boards we can use different tools to practice specific topics and discussions we can have our classes in a comfortable place or office or or a room the students can learn at their own rate teachers can use different tools or platforms ease of each sorry ease of reaching almost anywhere variety of platforms available families spend more time together yeah remote learning happens when students are in a virtual environment yeah I'm going to change this. I think this should go on this side. Yeah. Then disadvantages of remote learning, the technology learning curve, juggling being a teacher, parent and employee. Yeah. Lack of social activities, mental health issues, bad connection or tower connection. Sometimes we cannot learn as we would like to or frustration yeah actually that happens a lot um it is difficult for the students if he doesn't have discipline yeah um remote learning in guatemala yeah but signal from claro the majority of the population does not have uh, suitable devices internet issues yeah so using all of this information, we are going to make a Google slide or a Google presentation. So you have all the information in this document. Please don't close this 
this tab on your browser because we are gonna use it. So I'm gonna make a Google slide. I'm gonna make a new Google slide. So I'm gonna um, choose one of these uh, templates. Let's use, let me check. Let's use this one. Yeah. So the topic is remote learning. CTS. 2021. Okay. Let me make this thing bigger. Change the font. And yeah, then I'm going to add. Um, Another slide. So I have made uh, all the slides and then I'm gonna share this Google slide with you. So you can copy the information you have on this uh, Google, Google doc and you can move or copy this information to this Google slide. But we are going to do it kind of different this time. If you, if your birth month is from January to April, you have to write on this slide. Okay, if your birth month is from May uh, May to July, you're going to write on this slide. And if your birth month is from August to October, you're going to write on this slide. And if your birth month is from November to December, you're going to write this slide. Okay, so if you are, if your birth month is from January to April, you're going to write on this slide. If your birth month is from May to July, you're going to write on this slide. If your birth month is from August to October, you're going to write on this slide. And if your birth month is from November, to December, you're going to write on this slide. You're going to use the information uh, we have to make on this Google document. So the only thing you have to do is uh, copy the information and paste it on this Google slide. If you want, you can add as many pictures as you want or yeah, in order to make it look better, right? So let me share this with you. 
so you can enter to this Google slide. You can add uh, as many pictures as you want or, uh, or any anything you want in order to make it look better. I'm waiting for you. I'm gonna work in this activity with you because I have born from August to October. I okay. I, I think someone is pasting all the information. If you want, you create you can create more slides. You don't have to to use only the ones that I made. You can have any other slide if you want in order to add more information. I think no one is working on this one. I'm gonna work on that. Yeah, and I, I I can see that there there are oh you you changed the 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 first the first slide yeah I like it that one is better I've seen there is only one one person in this slide there is another one in this slide you are writing all of the information we were working on. Okay, so you can see that we were working on this slide together. We uh, were looking for all the information about what is cooperative learning, the advantages, the disadvantages, and cooperative learning in Guatemala. And after that, we create a Google slide. So I, I've seen that you are like finishing this slide, you're adding a lot of pictures, a lot of information, and yeah. Actually, you can do the same. If you want your students to interact with their partners, if you want your students to work together as a team, um, you can use all of these tools. And actually, 
another tool you can use that is very similar to Google Slides is Canva. You can use Canva in order to make a uh, presentations like this one, or or you can have like different slides. So you can ask your students to work in each team in one slide or one student per slide, but they are going to work as a team. Another thing that you can do is assign a specific role uh, for each team. You can, in this case, I couldn't assign roles or I couldn't uh, divide you as I wanted to because, um, you know, uh, we are not using any platform like Zoom or Google Meet. So I couldn't interact directly with you, but I'm doing, I'm interacting with you through this YouTube uh, live stream. But in your classes, you can interact a little bit more. So let's see the presentation. It says, Remote Learning TTAs, TTS 2021. Okay, so I'm gonna read this. What is cooperative learning? Cooperative learning is a methodology that motivates students to give ideas, effort, creativity, and more develop a good assessment, homeworks, or projects. Cooperative learning is a group learning activity organized in such in a way that learning is depending on socially structured exchange or information between groups. Okay, so I've seen you at this, this slide, you changed the title because it was a remote, remote learning, but, but that's fine. Okay, then it says advantages of cooperative learning, uh, interactive models, assessments based on a real world scenario, discussions and solving problems, uh, we can use tools to have effective learning programs, lectures, reading, assignments, and discussion boards. We can use different tools to practice specific topics and discussions. We can have our classes in a comfortable place. Uh, students can learn in their own rate. Teachers can use different tools or platforms. Ease of reaching almost anywhere a variety of platforms available. Spend more time together. Let me with this and this. Yeah. Disadvantages of cooperative learning. Some disadvantages might be complete for system usage, regional differences, harmonizing teacher programs or different subjects, technical problems, communication problems, etc. The technology learning curve, juggling being a teacher, parents and employee, lack of social activities, mental health issues bad connection, unstable connections. Sometimes we cannot learn as we would like to, frustrations. It is difficult for the students uh, if they don't have discipline. Um, cooperative learning in Guatemala, the majority of the population doesn't have access to a smartphone computer, uh, stable internet connection, and to prepare this type of activity, you need much more time. Yeah, of course, you need much more time. Oh. I've seen you are adding like even more slides than, I'm, than, than I ask, ask you. And that's nice because you are uh, working even more than, than, than I was expected to. And, and actually that can happen with your students too, that they can add as many ideas as they want. They cannot be just limited to uh, one slide. They can add as many slides or as many information they want to. And it says remote learning strategies, set up your home learning space, create a schedule, yeah. Set breaking time, schedule for uh, snacks, lunch, exercise, and fresh air. This will help our child be empowered and revitalized throughout the school day, yeah. Learning tools for cooperative learning. Yeah, here we have like a lot of tools. In this uh, tool sheet that we can add it maybe later. But yeah, basically you were working uh, in this Google slide, and I'm, I'm very excited of your 
your work. Yeah. Create a picture. Okay, so we are going to move on to the last tool. So please maybe you can uh, stop like adding more information to the Google slide or the Google document that we were working on. And maybe you can uh, look at the presentation, look at the YouTube live stream. So the next tool is named Wakelet. It is almost like Padlet, but in this case, you can encourage your students to add as many information as they, they, they want from a specific topic. For example, if you, I can ask you some uh, learning tools that are not related to cooperative learning. Well, we were talking a lot about cooperative learning tools, but now in this way, like I want you to write um, some tools, just virtual tools that you can use in your classroom or write digital tools. write as many tools you know in order to improve your virtual lessons. Okay. In this case, I just made a wakelet. You can uh, create a wakelet just by making a new wakelet account. You can do it so easy as just go to wakelet and sync up with your Google account, okay? So in this case, this is the topic and you can add like any information, for example, text. You can add also uh, links or, or any website you want. You can add pictures, you can add some bookmarks, you can add some documents. Imagine if you ask your students to work in a specific topic and you want to uh, recollect all the information related to that topic. And you want to keep all the information or get, get all the information in only one site. You can use this tool, Wakelet, in order to summarize all the information. So it is almost like Google tools we were using uh, a moment ago. So in this case, I want you to write as many digital tools you know. These tools in order to improve your virtual lessons. So I'm gonna share this link with you. So you can enter to the wakelet and add as many tools you know. Try, please try not to to write the same tools you were writing on the Google Sheet document, uh, try to write different tools, not only the same. Okay, so write as many tools you know, you just have to click 
on this button here, you have to add like any website, for example, let's add Padlet. I'm gonna copy this link. And as you can see, Padlet, uh, the website is there. You also can have like a little um, grid of the website. Yeah. You can add the website on this button right here. You tell me if you can add like any document or information on this side or you are not allowed to do it. Can you add the information? Please let me know if you can add the information. Okay, I've seen you have added a lot of tools, Class Dojo, Quizzes, Ed Puzzle, Geniali, Resi, Squatch, yeah, uh, Animoto, Free Comic. High conduct, mm, yeah. Actually, you have a lot of great tools. So, let me share again my presentation. Okay, so basically, we were practicing all the time and we were watching all these amazing tools we can use in order to uh, improve our virtual lessons. We have used Menti, that was the first one we used in order to brainstorm the information. We have used Padlet, where I ask you um, about, your, about your classes, if you have used online cooperative learning tools before, and when was the last time you have used them. We have used Google services in order to make a, a, a Jamboard in order to write as many tools as you knew in Google Sheets. We also made a Google Documents and then we copy the information from that document to Google Slide. Um, we use Wakelet in order to write as many tools we know. And we couldn't use Canva because of the time, but actually Canva is similar to Google Slides. You have to do the same process. You create a new presentation. You can add like any customization or template you want to. And then you can share that Canva link with your students. So your students can enter that link and they can work as a team. Um, we were 
watching all these tools. And the last tool I want to talk about with you, and a very effective tool that we couldn't use because we are on YouTube, on, on a YouTube live stream, is Zoom breakout rooms. And not only Zoom breakout rooms, also Google Meet breakout rooms. Because with these tools, you can assign an, a specific task or a specific uh, information to work on to your, to your students. You can make teams so they can discuss about that topic. And then they can go to the principal um, session and they can share the information. Or actually, you can use um, Zoom breakout rooms with all the tools I, I show you uh, today. For example, in, in Google Slides. Imagine you have an activity, you make the groups, you assign them at a, a for example, a different topic to, to, to each group. And then you ask your students to work on that topic, but they are going to work on that topic on a Google slide or on a Canva. So they can uh, use Zoom breakout rooms in order to discuss or or talk about that topic and they can put the information in the tools that you were that you learned today so i encourage you to use these tools if you haven't used them before especially google google suite because google suite is a great tool that no one uh, is using and that i think more people should should use so Thanks for your attention. I really appreciate uh, your attention in this TTS. I hope that you have learned a lot from me. So the last activity we have is question questions. We have um, 10 minutes for questions. So I'm gonna make a Padlet so you can write as many questions you have and I can read them and answer them. So let me share my screen again. Yeah, so I'm gonna make a new Padlet. It is going to be a conversation and the topic or the, the title will be questions. I won't customize this Padlet. I'm just gonna share it with you. So you can write your questions right here so I can read them and I can answer them. Okay, I, I have read a few questions in, in YouTube. One question says, can you provide us the list of the last ones you mentioned, the ones we couldn't practice for the time. Okay, uh, the ones that we couldn't practice for the time were Canva, that is almost like Google Slide. We also couldn't practice Google Breakout Rooms. Oh, sorry, Zoom Breakout Rooms. And Google Meet Breaker Rooms. I will send it to you so you can uh, read it. You can uh, write, a, write your questions in this panel.
And actually, now it is the time to fill the attendance. If you haven't filled it yet, you can go and write your name and all your information. Thank you, Luis Angel Mendez Berrio, for the valuable information provided to all of the participants through the conference. So we don't have questions. And thank you so much for solving all the doubts in the Padlet. So the TTS program is sponsored by United States Embassy, AGEDE, and with the support section de Idiomas and Facultad de Humanidades, has developed three manuals with materials that you might find interesting and useful we are sharing the drive folder link from where you may download the manuals in this moment. Please don't forget to fill in the attendance form. Remember, it will only be available for 15 minutes after the conference ends. Also remember that diplomas will be available on June 12, 2021. So thank you very much for your participation in this conference. We invite you to follow our transmission on these three days of TTS 2021. Have a nice evening. Thank you. And thanks for your attention too. I really appreciate it.